You get the summons, I'll pay the fine. When I listen back to the catalog of music that we've made in the last 10 years, there are so many interesting little Easter eggs. You take the there are all these little hints about where we were at and what was going on in our lives that are in these songs that we didn't know were in them at the time. It's all the same. I may never see the a lot of the songs on the first record are sort of extensions of that sort of discovery of like, this is cathartic, this is healing. If you let your walls down, it's a very fascinating and interesting journey when you put it under the microscope. And let it lie, let it lie. At the moment I have memories of my brother, he's got an instrument in his hand. It's a, he's playing music at the piano, he's singing songs, he's bashing away on a guitar. I love music and music was a big part of the culture of our family because our father was a working musician and had his own project that he fronted, projects that he fronted. So we we're always around that, we were surrounded by musicians growing up. I, uh, and I, I don't remember if I picked the bass or if I was handed the bass but I did fall in love with it. We, you know, we grew up spending a lot of time together. We made a lot of music together. We hung out a lot. We shared a lot of friends. We spent a lot of time together. And then when we grew up to work into the sort of working musician world, we, we spent less and less time together. We missed each other. So when Joey called me and was like, hey, I got this idea for a band, I, I was just like, I was ecstatic. Not only the idea of like spending time together was really attractive, but the idea of playing with one of my favorite musicians in the world was like, well, hell yeah. And I mean, realistically, from the moment I put the phone down, um, I was scheming to like, okay, where, how are we going to do this? And I started like Googling how to be a band. My idea was we would put together just a little duo we would do something kind of kitschy. I would play dobro, Dave would play ukulele bass, and we'd write some songs and just get in and play some small folk festivals. I don't remember when we actually decided that it was like time to make a record. Yeah. Probably start somewhere around 11, 2011, I think. 2011. I was predominantly working in like pop country stuff. I was also touring with Steve Bell at the time. One day we're, we're driving somewhere. It was between gigs and we're in a van and I, I don't remember who was driving, but I was just chatting with Joey and I said, do you write songs? Like, he pulled out a CD, a little demo that he had made on his computer at home, I think. Oh, I am no devil, you know I am no saint. I can't be somebody we both know I ain't, but I tried so hard, but I knew I wouldn't catch on, oh no. The, the van goes silent, like we're listening to this brilliant song and this brilliant playing and unbelievable voice, and I just looked at him and I said, I think I said, you playing with me is a sin. <laughs> You need to be. You need to be doing Joey. Like I'm glad you're on this tour, but you know when you go home, you're not a sad guy. Like you need to do this. Wishing you could have fixed me, but I'm still a drunk. And darling, you're still gone, long gone. I now I now realize it was probably because my demo sounds pretty bad, but he was like, hey, if you ever wanna, you know do some recording in the studio, we'll cut you keys. You know, just don't trash the place and uh, clean up your empties. We brought in our friends like Ryan Voth, played drums. Alex Campbell played keys on the record, came in and played Whirly and Rhodes and some organ. One of the pivotal decisions was hiring Murray to produce us. He was our, he was our bona fide guitar hero. He's a monster guitar player, super versatile, could play any style. Great singer. Great singer, 
great songwriter. He just was the guy to be, you know, and, and the guy on the scene. And, and he still is, you know. So he was sort of taking a step back from artist gigs and doing more producing. And so naturally that just, he was the first call that we made. And I remember one, one day Joey calling me and said, uh, he, he said, you know, would you be interested in listing some tunes that Dave and I have written together? And, and you know, yeah. would you be interested in like producing? Uh, we think we want to make a record. And I was like, of course, you know, like, yeah, come on over and we'll listen to the tunes. And, and at first, to be honest, I wasn't sure I knew what to do with it. <laughs> like, I, I hadn't produced a whole lot of records. And it was just kind of like, well, let's get together and jam in the, in the garage and see what happens. We sat there with the songs and with Murray's guidance, we just we just played them until they sort of took shape and we got to know who they were and understood how we were gonna approach them in the studio. We drove out to Rose Isle, Manitoba to record with Donnie Benedictson. The experience of being in that studio was so warm and fun and exciting and encouraging. It was just really, yeah, it was a really, it was a really beautiful time. And that, that kind of set the tone for the whole record. Like the entire experience of making that record was so uh, infused with joy. Yeah. And we had no idea what we were doing. We, we had no idea if it was any good. It almost didn't matter. We were just making it. It, it was uh, just a super, I hate saying it, but organic, you know, relationship that just kind of blossomed and, and had a, we had a blast doing it all. Motivated. Yeah, totally. Motivation. <laughs> I don't think we were there maybe two or three days at the most, uh, just tracking uh, uh, the drums and bass and a few guitars. It was just a great sort of place to, you know, get away from it all and just concentrate. And, and we just had an amazing time, lots of laughs. And, and then we finished the rest uh, here at Signpost. I'm going to the country, gonna find some peace. Realistically, we spent the most time working on the record in here. And so this is uh, Steve Bell, Dave Zaglinski's studio, Signpost Music. It was a really, really special experience to make that record in here. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for that creative freedom that we had here. And. That, and Steve knew exactly, Steve and Dave knew exactly what they were doing by giving us keys, you know. And they knew that this was going to be really fertile ground for us. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Long time. Yeah. Long. Good? Yeah. Good. Steve and Dave have made a pretty good habit of popping into our lives at exactly the right time to deliver exactly the right piece of advice. And I think a big part of why this band exists is because at just the right moment, he saw the potential in this young songwriter and realized that he just needed to give him a little flick. Yeah. And, uh, and in, you know, in hindsight, you look at it, you go, oh, you sly dog, you knew what you were up to. I got to hear it coming down the pike um, and hearing these songs develop and hearing their genius for arrangements and the grooves, like, the, you know, like these guys, they've just done this their whole lives. It was magical. Stack anything? I'm a runaway train. Whoa. What is that effect on you? It's an Octavia. Oh, yeah. I had no idea what kind of music we would make, and I, I had no real vision for the for the art. It was just like, let's just make some music and maybe play some covers and write a couple songs, and then the sort of first batch of songs that we wrote together wound up being things that we both we kind of like would finish a song and go like, I think this might actually be pretty good, or at least I like it, you know, and uh, and that was just kind of where where it started. I was like, I had sort of like these two modes and it was like, I want to be a Texas guy or mm -hmm. I want to be a slide guitar player, mm -hmm. but I didn't like, I, how do, how do I, I, I didn't know how to bridge them. In the middle? <laughs> and this was, I remember you saying like, what about, what if it's a slide solo? And I was like, no, you can't play on a slide. <laughs> you can't play slide with an Octavia. <laughs> and then we did and I was just like, ooh. 
<laughs> and all the fun, like, because though though that fuzz really like, oh man, it really responds to to, to, to make the switch from more you get session players like to so artists was actually a, a a big gulf to span. We wrestled a lot in the early days with setting our ego aside, because I think we went into it wanting to be cool. We would all get together, we'd bash out these really rocking ideas, and we could play it, but it didn't, it, it just, like, the words didn't sit right in our mouths. It just, it just didn't feel honest or integral, and it, and we just couldn't bring ourselves to do it or explore it any further. They just, they just kind of fell to the cutting room floor. And the moment that we stopped trying to do that and just kind of tried to channel the stuff that we were feeling and thinking about, and then that's the music that everybody knows now. We just started kind of writing from a place that a little bit destroyed us because I real like I realized, I think we realized through the process that when we wrote from that place, it instigated some sort of change. And so you know, a lot of the songs on the first record are sort of extensions of that sort of discovery of like, this is cathartic. This is, it's healing. That's what it feels like to connect, not just with people, but with each other and also with ourselves. For us, it's just always been about chasing this real, real honesty, real integrity, telling the stories that we, we can speak to, that we understand. It's medicine for us and if we do it right, it's medicine for the people who hear it. I've been searching for for you. You didn't even call or write. This has a completely different vibe. <laughs> Walked out the door without a word. I love it. Remix. But now the sun's coming up. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> heart just sinks with it. That just says, like, these guys are so sad. <laughs> How sad? The song Firecracker and Runaway Train are virtually identical in their original form. Yeah. And we, we had these two songs next to each other, same key, virtually same chord progression, same, same tempo, um, written about the same girl. <laughs> and Murray was like, Guys, guys, these, <laughs> these songs can't exist side by side. They're both they're both good songs. They both should go on the record, but they can't go on the record the way that they are. Yeah, we like we we revisited that song a number of times. We tried to change Firecracker first, couldn't find a different interpretation of it, <laughs> and then we were like, okay, well, if not that one, then maybe we got to change Runaway Train because we tried a bunch of different versions of Firecracker and they all sounded weird. But I, I have I just have a memory of of Murray coming into the studio and, and we'd be like, hey, I think we solved it. Here's here's the answer. <laughs> yeah, this is ringing a bell, actually. Yeah. And and we played like this, like, kind of like slick pop version of Firecracker. And he was like, uh-huh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're uh-huh. right. You're right. I was wrong. But yeah, I want to I, hear, I hear it again. Just say it again. I was wrong. You're right. And this is something that I now come to know about Murray is he is when he hears something that he doesn't like, he goes, ah. <laughs> and you're like, fuck it, pull the plug. <laughs> but the thing is, is like, he's always right. Yeah, that, and that's absolutely. and that's what I've come to to know and trust with Murray is when he goes, you you know, it's like whatever it is he's gonna say, you, you, he's correct. It's really it's really fun, like, cause I I can just hear us like trying to figure out who we are and like especially totally. in some of those other solos where they start yeah. and it's like oh this is like i'm imitating someone like i want this to sound like yeah. someone i really am thankful for the for them taking a chance on me that well, record has bring, uh, opened up so right. many doors and 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 uh given me a career basically in in production because a lot of people love that record it's reached people you know all over the world
not only are they individually talented, but they together they've got something that 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 is unbelievable. Part of me feels a little bit like a proud uncle, right? Like there's just you just love to see some kid do well. It feels just lovely to be part of that. Ten years later, looking back on it, the record that we know as Let It Lie, we decided that we wanted to kind of celebrate it a bit. You get the summons, I'll pay the fine. I know my place, you can take your time. You take the high road, I'll take the plane. Just, just because this record has been so important to us, we had this idea of just like, what happens if Joe, Dave, and Murray get together and as three pals kind of reminisce on this musical adventure? Let's work up these arrangements and then just revisit these songs like old friends and see what happens. to leave this alone and let it lie. We wanted to give sort of new life to the songs, but also, you know, the idea of playing them, just the three of us, Dave and Marie and I, just felt like the right sort of format. I shuffle my feet while you slam the door. And I was just... It's very different than anything that we've ever done before. It's also really transparent, like it just sort of allows the sort of song and the performance to shine through. And so we kind of wanted to give our fans um, a really honest way to hear these songs and sort of give a little bit of new life to these songs and present them in a way that they haven't really been presented before. You say the words you want to hear And I can always be the one to swallow my pride If you let you want down, maybe you It's very special to visit those songs again and sort of uh, reimagine them a little bit and just remember like, oh, these are very special. And, and it's like, I just love singing with the guys. There's something about singing harmonies with people and they just have this connection, of course, as brothers and just fitting in there is just, you know, trying to blend. And I found it a huge challenge, but it's also super fun and rewarding. It was a very fun process and, and I hope people will love it. You say I'm selfish, that may be right That my songs can't keep me warm at night So you go your way, I go mine I know you're hurting, but you'll be just fine Let it lie, let it lie.